Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this replay of a live stream about some quick critical thinking tips when you're reading books and using mnemonics. And uh, I recorded a more formal video about this, but thought I'd hop on quick for a live stream because I got Alec Mullen uh, going to be all here in a few minutes. He, if you don't know the name, he's the current reigning world memory champion three times in a row. We're going to record a call. So uh, warm it up my voice. And if you're joining us, Hit the thumbs up, let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. If you're watching the replay, get subscribed to this channel, hit the thumbs up, let me know in the discussion afterwards if you have any questions you'd like to ask Alex Mullen, because I'll be talking to him very, very soon. And because I don't want to be late, I'm going to set a timer here, but uh, I'm going to talk about what I have done while reading the introduction to this book, the critical thinking that I put into action, and uh, what I do memory-wise in order to make it the fullest possible uh, reading here. So we're going to put the timer on so I'm not late for my appointment and we'll go for, let's say, 15 minutes. Say hello in the chat if you're joining us and if you have any questions that you'd like me to pass on to Alex Mullen, let me know and uh, I will do that for you. If not, then the timer starts now. So what I do when I read a book is the first thing that I want to memorize is the date of publication. Now why would that be? Well, it's because when you know that this book is published in a certain era, you start to think about its contents differently. You start to think about it in context. So uh, this is Maps of Meaning by Jordan Peterson, which uh, was suggested that I talk more about Jordan Peterson on this, uh, this channel. So um, I just went and got the book. You may have seen the previous video where I vlogged going and getting it and you know, using memory techniques on the spot. But the date is 1999. And so critical thinking starts. Now, in terms of memorizing that, if you have a 00 to 99, it's already done. So if you know the major, then you know that uh, 9 and 9 would be a B or a P word or a P or a P word or a B or a B word or a B or a P word. So uh, I use different things at different times. I've used the Big Bopper, I've used the Pope, um, and so on. And so that now is associated. You don't really need a memory palace for that, although you're certainly free to, to use one if you want. Uh, and wherever you are in your memory improvement journey, then uh, that may be something you want to do. But um, in this case, it's just on the colophon page or the colophon page as it's called. And uh, it's right there, 1999, right? So what, what do I then start to think? Well, I know Peterson's a Canadian like myself and you know, that's a, an interesting thing to think about because who was the prime minister? If you go in your memory, now I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it was Jean Chrétien, and Jean Chrétien was the Liberal Party. So this is a very, very good foundation to think about. Now, we don't know for a fact that this was written during that period, but uh, it's still, it would have gone through its final edit at some point around the time. Uh, so it could be late 1998, 99 or whatever, but it's published in 1999. So these are factors, and I want to think about Jean Chrétien. He's a Liberal, Liberal Party, uh, French, uh, French Canadian Quebecois, um, and that, that's stuff that doesn't necessarily have a conclusion, but I'm putting it in my mind in order to just start to build a palette. The other thing I think about is who is the president of the United States, because when a Canadian is writing a book, well, Canadians are on, they share pretty much the border with the United States. I mean, they do share the border with the United States, but most of Canada's population is on the United States border. And so as I'm reading the maps of meaning, I'm starting to like map what could the meaning be in terms of where it was written, the social and historical situation. And so now I've got Jean Chrétien of the Liberal Party in the Canadian system. And we know that uh, from you know, rummaging around in memory that uh, it must have been Clinton who was the president during that period. So we've got Democrats in a liberal situation. And just memorizing the date of the book gives you an interesting context just right there. There's other things that I think of is what is the nearest historical situation of greatest importance, which would be 9-11. 9-11 hasn't happened yet. Right? So this is pre-9-11. This is very interesting to think about. It's not that pre of it, but it's previous to it nonetheless. Um, if you're joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know if this is useful to you. Say hello in the chat. We've got a limited talk time here because we're meeting Alex Mullen very quickly to record a call. Uh, so thanks for being here. If you have any questions, make, up, make the uh, time now to do it or leave them in the discussion below uh, on this video. Now. 
The other thing that I'm gonna think of is what are some of the big films that happened? So if I'm not mistaken, The Matrix came out that year, which for Maps of Meaning is a pretty big deal that it would come out that same year because there's stuff that's going on in the world and there are connections to be made. Now, in Canada, the, uh, the Canadian version of the matrix is called Existence, E capital X, I S T E N Z, capital Z. And that's very interesting as well because there's, there's just a palette there of, of some very, very interesting things to play with in the mind. Why? Because these are tools that you will use to help you memorize the contents of the book, or at least that's what I do, right? So now I'm thinking of Neo, I'd be a nice guy to work with. Uh, the, um, the characters uh, Allegra Geller in Existence, uh, Ted Peichel in Existence, like I know the names of these characters, and it's partly it's just great brain exercise to start making these connections, but I'm going to memorize the contents of Maps of Meaning, or the contents that I want from Maps of Meaning, by mapping it out in its historical context. So 1999 tells me I've got Jean Chrétien, I've got Bill Clinton, I've, I don't have 9-11 because it you know, hasn't happened yet, but it's in this era that's you know, pr a precursor to this, which is very interesting to think about. What, is, what are the events that led up to that? Oh, hi, Mina, thanks for saying hello. Sandra is uh, here as well with the waves from Northern California. Hello, Sandra, thanks for saying hello. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world. Is that making sense to you? I'm just, I'm, it, imagine being a painter. You're reading a book and you're painting the book into your memory. Your memory is the canvas. And if you just look at the date of publication and you start to make associations, what do you know already about 1999 what do you think you know? What is your memory telling you? I can go and check and it'd be like, oh, you know, The Matrix wasn't 1999, it was maybe 98, and then that would be a missed call. But nonetheless, it's still in the, in the sort of era. I'm pretty sure it was 99, and I'm pretty sure Existence also came out in 99. In any case, the point being is that even if, there's, even if that's a missed call, then I still have that general material. So I'm gonna use, now I've got Bill Clinton, I've got uh, Jean Chrétien, I've got Ted Peichel, uh, who is played by Jude Law, uh, I've got uh, Allegra Geller, and I've got Neo, and then I can go on Morpheus and so on. So I'm going to begin to think about these people as I'm reading. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do. So what I would just really suggest is that you become very, very friendly with something called the Colophon page. The Colophon page is the page that gives you the date of uh, publication, and then use that as a trampoline into imagery, a trampoline into figures and popular culture stuff. And it might be for you, you don't, you're not a big fan of movies, so movies wouldn't come to mind, but you might think, oh, that was the year that, I, that this album came out. For some reason, no album is popping out of my mind for that particular year, but you could probably find something. You could say, of course, for memory palace work, where did I live in 1999? And uh, I know where I lived, and so that may or may not be the perfect memory palace, but then I can associate the book with the memory palaces of that time, of that era. Will it give an extra memory advantage that they are from that year of this book that I'm reading in 2018? Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, the mysteries of the mind are interesting. But the point is, is that you one should never sit around humming and hawing over what memory palaces you're going to use because the book was a, written in a year. Uh, if you were alive that year, then you got oodles of memory palaces. If you weren't alive that year, if this book was in 1899, well, why not use 1999 anyway, right? So it's just, it, uh, it's, it's just making associations and, and, and so forth and really, really getting the most out of it. So that's, uh, that's what's gonna happen. That's what, that is what's happening, and it's happening now. So I made a, a video already going a little bit uh, into uh, some of these issues as well uh, in terms of the actual content, but that's where I start, and it's going to help with everything across the board as I read this book because I have the palette set for, with which I'm going to paint and to remember the concepts and so forth. So think of that when you're reading books. Let me know if this was useful to you. And uh, if you're joining us and you haven't said hello yet, say hello, hit that thumbs up. And if you're watching the replay, let me know if this was useful to you or if you have any questions in the comments below. And 
Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, be here for another couple of minutes. I got the timer on, going to talk to Alex Mullen, uh, current reigning memory champ, and uh, looking forward to meeting with him. I know what my questions are, but I'm saving that for the recording. <laughs> uh, really uh, excited to hear what his answers are. And incidentally, this is all uh, about a an interesting in initiative that we're doing where a, a number of the, the leading figures in the memory world are pitching in to create some graduation bonuses for the masterclass uh, students uh, going forward. And well, th these are just shocking me with and surprising me with such amazing ideas and answers to the questions that I have for when I'm, uh, you know, looking for guidance in my memory practice and so forth. So that's really, really exciting. And so, of course, we have to have one with Alex Mullen, and I'm really grateful to be meeting with him here in uh, really less than half an hour. So that's a beautiful thing. And so if you want to pass on a question, now is the chance. Rahul's here from India. Thank you for saying hello. Um, has anybody, let me know in the, in the discussion later if you're watching the replay, has anybody read Maps of Meaning? I'd, I'd really be interested to know. Um, obviously, the, the, uh, the whole Jordan Peterson thing is a huge phenomenon right now, but uh, an interesting one, a very, very interesting one. And uh, Warning Good People says, is there any critical thinking in evolutionary theory? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of it. It's uh, evolutionary theory emerges from the capacity for critical thinking, for sure. Uh, what is critical thinking? Well, critical thinking is many things. I taught it for university at year, for years, for a number of years, four years. And critical thinking is essentially a kind of uh, very strategic skepticism and then a means of testing evidence by actually asking the right questions to produce evidence and then testing are these the right questions and is this evidence supporting the question or the claims uh, that we have in the questions and so forth so uh, evolution is the best uh, critical thinking on the planet that we have uh, in science so great question thank you for that and you know critical thinking is such a powerful tool but my point here in this live stream has been that if you want to set the basis from a mnemonic perspective of what you're going to remember and think critically about, start with the date, start with the political figures, the major political figures, obviously in the country where the author is um, located, and then obviously the nearest country, the one that borders that, because especially in this particular case, the influence on uh, Canada by the United States is immense especially when you know a lot about the information media infrastructure and how it was built, the history of it, which um, is a, an interesting thing. You know, in many ways, Peterson is the modern uh, McLuhan in some sense, but he's also kind of like a René Girard figure. And that's another thing that I do in my critical thinking and my palette is like, who is Jordan Peterson like? And what is, what is Maps of Meaning like? Um, it's, uh, what are the other books here? And so there's many, many other books. Uh, so he's, uh, Peterson's referring to Carl Jung very quickly, um, but I think of René Girard and that, uh, you know, the book, The Scapegoat, for example, is really, really important. And I think of Marshall McLuhan. And, you, you know, one problem that happens that you can use critical thinking for is that some people like, I read this and I'm just like, I've read all this stuff before. I've, I've heard these ideas before. Critical thinking will help you suppress that because you'll understand that actually you've never read it before. This is now these ideas through the lens of a voice, which is Jordan Peterson in this particular case. And, you know, repetition is always difference. So even if I read the same book twice, it's already different. And critical thinking, and if you're being in that, right? And, you know, this is kind of back to the evolution thing. Does evolution involve critical thinking? Well, yes, of course it does. Because when you're evolving as a person of intelligence, then you're going to be aware that even if you see ideas again and again and again, you're going to realize that they're always different. You're different. You have a different chemical makeup than the last time. You're older. You're probably in a different location. There are multiple factors that make it absolutely different. Repetition is always difference. There actually technically is no repetition. 
because nothing can ever occur in the same place or time, technically, or even to the same person. Because, as Jordan Peterson concludes here, very quickly, there is no Jordan Peterson. And that was the horrible moment of, and the beautiful moment of recognizing a lot, like having, having a great epiphany that changed life and made life better, is realizing that there is no self, right? And then having a means of testing that, and then having a means or a map, a means of making a map for a life to be meaningful in a world where there actually is no evidence of a self, and yet evolution of that self that is not in evidence is still somehow in evidence, and you're evolving towards being a better person by having the ability to create a map of meaning. So, <laughs> all of which is to say that critical thinking will help you perceive the value in a book, even if the ideas are very similar to other books that you've read before, right? And you are evolving by su suppressing that criticism as you now perceive the value of these ideas through another lens, through another self. So Warning Good People says, does extended and chronic cannabis use permanently hinder short-term memory? Memories of events from five seconds ago up to a day or, uh, or have a video on YouTube all about uh, marijuana and cannabis. So please go and check that out and uh, appreciate the question. Uh, so it's definitely something to look at. Cat Satan is here. Hello, Cat Satan. I love that name. Good to see you again. So um, my alarm just went off, guys. Thank you for those interesting and compelling questions. I'm going to vlog a little bit more about reading this book and some of these tips and strategies for critical thinking, how that I use memory techniques to remember books of criticism that I'm reading or books of, uh, uh, of psychology or philosophy or whatever the case may be and some of the things I do first in order to create that mnemonic palette for getting more out of what I want to remember from it. And so... Really had a great time meeting with you all today. Hit that thumbs up. And uh, I don't know that I'll be asking uh, Alex Mullen about evolution or, uh, or, uh, <laughs> or marijuana, but uh, certainly those uh, are interesting questions, both to be explored further in the very, very near future. But I, again, I really appreciate the opportunity to hang out with you all today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Things are going to be pretty busy in the next little while, so I'm not sure when the next live stream will be or if there will even be one in the month of August. But if you happen to uh, watch uh, those other videos that I put up that are, are not live streamed, that would be great. As ever, hit that thumbs up and get subscribed to this channel if you're not already subscribed. And come visit me at MagneticMemoryMethod.com if you missed last week's podcast and blog post, for example, it's pretty epic and will teach you a lot about how to improve your memory. And of course, take the free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT so you can learn how to create a proper memory palace and more about these tools that we talked about today so that you have a firmer basis for critical thinking. Because at the end of the day, and this is what I'll leave with, the quality of your thinking has to do with your ability to rotate the information in your mind without reference to the text, right? So it's like, imagine trying to taste wine, to be a wine taster, without putting the wine in your mouth and holding it there and rolling it around so that all the taste buds have equal opportunity to perceive the, the substance of wine, right? Well, it's the same thing with critical thinking. The quality of your critical thinking has to do with how much of that information can touch all the neurons and the neural networks in your brain. And so if you're not memorizing the information from books, it's not, there's a, always this question, can you, can you memorize stuff and not understand it? Or can you understand things that you haven't actually memorized? There's a better question to be asked, is are you allowing your brain the opportunity to have as much possible access throughout all the neurons and the neural networks so that it not only gets into memory, but it becomes part of understanding and knowledge. And here's the thing, the creation of new knowledge, new knowledge. You see, that's the pinnacle, the ne plus ultra that you want to achieve. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It feels very, very good. So JA is here. Hello, JA. Thanks for saying hello. Sorry you got a uh, poor internet connection and no earphones, but I, as always, look forward to uh, your comments and look forward to seeing you then. Cat Satan says, any tips about dealing with depression? I find it difficult to care about some stuff in my life. 
give me an email uh, and you can certainly look up my, some of my videos about that on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I've got material on that uh, for sure. Uh, not medical advice, but you know, I have uh, unfortunately to deal with that myself. A couple of, uh, just the last week, there was a video I put out about manic depression and bipolar disorder. So go to the channel and just scroll through and you'll see one that is uh, very, very prominently about that topic, and it gives you some tips on how that I deal with that. And uh, certainly we can pick up that topic again in the future, Cat Satan. So hang in there, have heart, take heart. You are the best possible version of yourself. Just do some research, do some studies. You can go watch that previous video. In terms of things that have helped me very quickly, don't want to be late for my date with uh, Alex Mullen here, uh, but uh, very quickly, uh, Meditation, diet optimization, making sure you weed out all food sensitivities. I have a video on foods that improve memory, the real truth that you need to know based on what I discovered. I basically cured mental illness pretty much, uh, even though I had a dip recently into a short depression, but I I know why that depression came. I mean, my wife went into the hospital and she had complications and I got super stressed and there were problems on the internet and all kinds of stuff, right? So I fell into this little dip, but actually it was the best depression I ever had, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, and the reason why I say that is because it was my most self-aware, least suffering depression. It wasn't even really a depression at all, to tell you the truth. But it was, I did feel low and I did feel the more intrusive thoughts than I normally did. So. I hope that helps. Um, I, I would, I could throw like oodles of books at you, but really just be a seeker of real knowledge. Uh, people who really have, have dealt with these things. And by the way, now that we're on to this one last thing, I've just submitted to a few of my closest friends, the full outline for my next book, which is about mindfulness, meditation, and memory techniques and how to use them all together. I'm going to do a live webinar walkthrough of the entire outline. And if you'd like to be invited to that, you need to be on my email list. There's one way to get on my email list and that's at magneticmarymethod.com and you register for the free course. I, this, is, this is a privileged place to be and we have a common language and the, the way you get that is to have a uh, free course and go through it and then start to receive emails. But you won't be receiving an invitation to be on the walkthrough of my new books outline and participate in its production unless you're on my email list. So that's at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT. Go through the free course and once the course is over, you'll start to receive notifications and invitations to special things like this. And that book is coming from the perspective of someone who's survived years and years now of severe uh, depressions and so forth and really just was on the boat to health and figured it out as much as I could and despite like this recent little dip it was the best depression I ever had and I know why and I know that you know these things are just going to come there's no promises there's no guarantees in life but there is a quality of the ship that you build for yourself that can weather storms better and better and better the more you optimize the more you practice the more you really, really pay attention to the small granular details. But sometimes you gotta start with the big picture before you can even perceive the small details. And so you gotta start somewhere, begin anywhere. So for you, Cat Satan, great name by the way. Everybody hit the thumbs up for Cat Satan's great name. <laughs> and uh, just go watch those previous videos. Cat Satan says, I'll do it. I'm really tired of being so miserable. I will try it, try it, try it. And like, again, I don't wanna overwhelm you with tons and tons of books, but uh, I do mention lots and lots of books. So wherever you're at, wherever you're feeling, think of what might help you the most. Try to read, listen to lots of audiobooks. I used to love listening to Wayne Dyer. For example, you can just go on YouTube, put in Wayne Dyer, uh, listen to Eckhart Tolle, listen to whomever. Look, they have all got, they've all got things to complain about, for sure. But just the general scope of things is to figure out how to be in the present moment as fully as possible. And the, one of the things that these dudes love Black is that they don't talk enough about you as a biological unit. You are a person who is essentially food, right? If, if we had not reached the top of the food chain, so to speak, then other things would be eating us, right? But instead we're eating them. And so that means we are food too. So the quality of us as entities 
is the quality of the things we put into our body. And each person, you can't go and find some diet. Go watch my video on foods that improve memory. I think you'll find, if you, if I had a bad hair day, I, almost every day is a bad hair day for me. But if you could put up with the hair, turn off the vision, just listen to what I'm saying, and go and see a medical professional say, I want to do something like this, get it figured out. Because I'm confident, no promises, uh, and I definitely under medical care with a doctor. This is not medical advice. But if you do what I'm talking about in that video, I'm confident you will see such a positive transformation so quickly because most of these issues are from food. The other thing is sleep, from hydration, and just having enough social interaction with people who actually are interesting and cool, which everybody can find. I know this is, it is possible. And then using your memory and getting enough brain exercise and enough knowledge, enough input that matters, information that's actually worth consuming. That will just get all those things together and you'll be fine. That's gonna be part of, a huge part of the topic of my next book on mindfulness, meditation, and memory, where those three things meet, how to weave them all together so you can remember information as much as you want for as long as you wanna hold it and do it with the healthiest brain that anybody could ever possibly own just by simply paying attention to the big picture and the small details at the same time. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I'll be talking more about this uh, as we go forward. Uh, perhaps if there's enough interest, hit that thumbs up, go to Magnetic Memory Method, get subscribed, and I'm gonna go prepare the cameras and all that jazz for my meeting with Alex Mullen. Thanks everybody. Look forward to seeing your comments below. More thumbs up, take care. Come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com and keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye.